Welcome back to Immortal Empires. Today we're going to be playing some more Krokgar. And speaking of Krokgar, we were actually in the middle of fighting a war with the Skaven. And I noticed there is a Beastmen army here. So I do wonder if we attack, will the Beastmen reinforce? Although most of the Skaven army is with Sniven here. So maybe we should attack him first. Ah, we can't reach him. Of course, he's been evading us for quite a few turns now. Maybe we can attack the Cravens of Soltek. And then attack Sniven. Let's see. So let's go in and attack the Cravens of Soltek here. Uh, that will be a decisive victory with low casualties. So we may as well auto resolve that one. Uh, 1.9k experience. Very nice there. And we will go ahead and occupy of course. So we did manage to kill Mecha... Mechanij... Yeah. <laughs> we killed the rat. That's uh, when... I can't pronounce that one. And we have secured the province here. And we also did successfully complete this mission. Kill 100, uh, 1,500 enemies in battle. So we now have access to four Blessed Cyrus spears with shields. Uh, so we will get those in one two, into one of our other armies. Krokgar did gain a level up. So let's see. What should we give him? Let's give him some more hit points. And then hopefully we can unlock Swiftness of Itzel here. Uh, when he gets another level up. And we'll see what Sniven chooses to do. Let's see, we can also... Let's give plus 20 growth and some income from buildings. Now, so we have the Jungle of the Gods. We still need to kill this final Skaven army. And then we need to come down here and fight Abyssa. Because she is currently taking some of our settlements here. Uh, if we go back to our Lords though. We do have Uaxti. He's over in Lustria. He's actually got a level up here. Let's see, what can we give him? We can give him a deadly onslaught. That would be a good one there. And Luther has in fact Who left his you? settlement. That's not a very scary army. That's a lot of bloated corpses actually. Do we have any ranged units? We do have some. We have these javelins and skirmishers. Uh, missile cavalry, missile beasts. I think we can easily attack Lufa here. Can we reach him this turn? Uh, in fact, it's also a decisive victory. So let's go ahead and auto resolve that one. There we go. And I think I might actually go for the replenishment here. This would be a good opportunity to maybe attack the star tower. And who actually has gained a new trait there. Plus five leadership when fighting against vampire coast. And plus five melee attack when fighting at sea. Uh, maybe a little bit useful and some glittering scales there plus four armor plus five melee defense and a passive ability enemies in range for minus five melee attack that's actually quite a nice one and we actually also gained another level up so let's see we could give him some weapon strength here uh, this one also gives weapon strength I think this is bigger weapon strength. But yeah, this is just a flat 20% weapon strength. So let's go ahead and give him some of that. Uh, Luther's army has still survived a little bit. So let's go and attack them again and wipe them out. There we go. We've got that replenishment once again. And we gained another new trait. Plus 10% leadership aura size when attacking. And plus leadership. Uh, plus 2 leadership when attacking as well. And we also gained an obsidian lodestone, 20% spell resistance. So now the star tower should be relatively no, undefended. If we check their garrison, they do have a garrison, quite a sizable one. Um, oh, stop that. There we go. Uh, I realized <laughs> we were going to take attrition damage. Let's just sit in here, replenish, and then we can go and attack the star tower next turn, I'm sure. There we go and look at Tepchik. Where were we taking him? Okay, he's going back to the Fortress of Dawn. So let's go ahead and put him in here. Uh, maybe we could give you the Blessed Saurus units. Although Krokgar is going to be coming down here soon. Where is Prigel? Maybe we give him the Blessed Saurus units. I think we do just because he is a Saurus uh, themed army. So let's go ahead and recruit these guys. There we go. And I'm actually going to start moving him north. Wait. When did the dwarves take this? Was this not mine? I thought I owned this settlement. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, we're going to go and force march. And go back towards Kemri to take out this army and hopefully recapture Kemri for ourselves. Uh... If we go to Tepchik here, Tepchik is fine here. Maybe we can get some more Skink Javelins. Uh, yeah, let's go and get some more Javelins. There we go. 
In fact, we would run into income issues, though. Um, let's see, can we build income anywhere? I don't think so, right? Ah, this gives us an extra 100. We could also upgrade this to tier 3. Does that give extra gold? It gives an extra 50. Uh, better than nothing. And then we'll see. Is there any other buildings that can be upgraded? Down on the Serpent Coast. That's just a food building. Uh, what about here? Have we already built income over here? Uh, we have. Right. <laughs> That's uh, a bit worrying. What about down here in the jungle of the gods? Uh, we can build income. The caverns of Soltek. So let's go ahead and build an extra 200 gold there. And maybe even in Soltek's tail, we can build some income there. And we do have some food generation, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. And then let's actually go and upgrade the food here as well. We will check out diplomacy for the turn. I don't think we're interested in any of this. Yeah, we're not interested in any of this. And we will be bankrupt next turn. But I think we'll be fine because of our new income buildings. Or how long does it take for them to come alight? Maybe I cancel this one. Uh, yeah, it does take a few turns. Uh, so let's go ahead and end our turn. Go to turn 69. Melwyn looking for a trade agreement. Now, interestingly enough, he does actually have a, a defensive alliance with one of uh, the lizards here, as well as trade agreements with two lizardman factions. So I might actually accept that one. Um, we would get some extra gold per turn, and he is on good terms with some of the other lizards. So yeah, I will actually accept this one here. And the Skaven foolishly attacking us here. Um, we're going to auto-resolve that one. Uh, there's no point fighting this one manually here. And I think that should wipe them out as well. Uh, let's go ahead and get... Uh, let's take the extra gold here. One shot. Your Slan Mage Priest's researches reveal the whereabouts of a distant but accessible plague recording a ritual. A uh, plaque, sorry. Recording a ritual. Usable once, which will powerfully defend your greatest Sour Scar veteran against agents of the ancient enemy. Is it worth spending an, sending an expedition, especially to retrieve this one-off advantage? So we lose 2,000 gold, but we do get minus 20% enemy hero action and success chance. And plus, uh, I don't really care about this. We're going to do nothing, especially as we need the gold right now. So I don't think that's worthwhile there. And our gold per turn has gone up a little bit, so that's good. Uh, we do need to work on our income, though. And the Sword of Cain has been claimed by another... Uh, Nakari there actually claiming the Sword of Cain. That could be quite dangerous. Um, one of our allies there uh, performing a right. And we did manage to kill the Skaven. We'll see if we wiped them out. I don't think we have actually. Uh, but we have gained a new follower. Plus four leadership when fighting against Skaven. And oh no, there we go. Clan Warbidus have been obliterated. So the rats are no more. And we also unlocked a new technology. Plus 10% weapon strength for Skink. Chameleon Skink, Chameleon Stalker, and Red Crested Skink units. Uh, we open up our technology tree here. We can now research interpreting the old one's meaning, which gives us plus free control, but also unlocks all of these technologies um, as well as these. So let's go ahead and start researching that one. Uh, that should be very nice. If we go over to Krokgar, a few of his lords, or heroes, sorry, have leveled up. Let's see, does our Skink Priest have all their magic? Ah, not yet. Let's go ahead and level Wind Blast. And then our Scar Veteran here. Let's go and give him... Oh, he's very leveled up. And we could give him some speed. Should we give him some leadership? Yeah, let's give him some more leadership there. Uh, that should work nicely. So now we don't have to worry about the Skaven. These Beastmen here are a bit of a worry. Um, Abyssa doesn't seem to be in our lands anymore, though. Maybe we should take out the Beastmen before we worry about Abyssa, just so they don't cause any problems. So let's go ahead and declare this war here. Uh, they will try to run, but I think we can still reach them. Uh, there we go. No point fighting that one manually. Uh, let's go ahead and take the gold. Very nice. And Blooded Axe Tribe have been obliterated. That must be about the 10th uh, the time this campaign. 
Uh, let's put Krukgar on Force March and we're going to take him down to these settlements now to recapture those. And Krukgar did gain a level up. So let's go ahead and give him Swiftness of Itzel plus 25% speed. It's an explosion. Uh, does not affect friendly troops and allows chance to escape melee. So I guess it's used for knocking away the enemy so Krokgar can get out of uh, crowds of units if he wishes to. Let's uh, go over to Wagsti. I think we can attack the Star Tower this turn, so let's go ahead and try that one. Uh, it gives us a valiant defeat here. I wonder, if we siege for a few turns, should we be okay? Uh, let's go ahead and continue that siege there. I don't think we're taking attrition when we're sieging either, so that's fine. And if they march out, I think we can definitely beat those guys in a field battle. Now, Tepchik over here. Who's this? Ah, that's, um, okay. Uh, the lizards there. Let's take him... Let's go do some scouting. Uh, maybe we can take back these settlements with him. Uh, if we go up to Prigel here, he's going to continue going towards Kemri. Uh, so let's keep on marching him northwards here. And everyone else has been moved. We can build a few buildings. Um, that's interesting. When did I build the tunnels here? I don't remember building those. Uh, but let's go ahead and increase our defenses here. Just so the Tomb Kings have a harder time taking this. I think I'm actually going to replace this here with some income because I, I don't actually remember building that one it has puzzled me a little bit and then in the temple avenue of gold oh we can actually build a gold mining pit so let's go ahead and do that one that should also help our income a lot now we can perform another rite of awakening but i don't think there's much use to that uh, because we're not using slam ages and we do already have one of each type in our pool let's see if we have any diplomacy we can partake in Hi. I think we are on good terms with all the lizards now, right? Uh, apart from the wards, Wardens of the Living Poor. Yeah, we have non-aggression pacts with everyone. Uh, so it might be a while before we get any war diplomacy. But let's go ahead to turn 17 now. And the Tomb Kings actually deciding to attack us. But that would be a Pyrrhic victory for us. Um, I trust in the auto resolve here. I would definitely be able to do that if I fight it uh, manually as well, of course. <laughs> um, that's uh, going to make our reoccupation of Henry much easier now that the army defending it has gone. I will get the replenishment just so our garrison heals up a little bit faster there. Ambusher discovered Kin Minkhaus. Uh, that's quite a way away from where we are. Actually, that's not too far, but uh, not an immediate worry of there. Uh, and a great incantation of Kassar performed. Uh, I believe that's by Arkan there. So we don't have to worry about that as well. And we also discovered Arkan the Black in Ambush Stance. So the Tomb Kings fighting against each other. And we have the Winds of Pain. The world yields to those who master the Winds of Magic. Great bolts from the heavens scour souls from bodies whilst raging torrents of fire rend the very flesh from bone. Magic can rip enemies into a dozen pieces or leave nothing but an ugly blood stain where once they stood. The power granted by the cataclysm many eons ago can be harnessed now to bring ruin and destruction upon our enemies. All those who feel the pull of magic feel it grow as the world festers under chaos ruinous gaze. Their need to ravage grows stronger and stronger by the hour. So for five turns, we will have plus 10 Winds of Magic Power Reserve uh, for all armies of all factions. Uh, might be a little bit useful for us there. Of course, we do have our Chain Lightning uh, spell that we like to use a lot. Now, if we take Krokgart, let's continue marching him along the coast here. I do think Abyssa has actually left the lands. And then we'll take Tetrick and reoccupy Dawn's Light. Uh, 1,200 gold to colonize this, but that's fine. Uh, I will go ahead and do that, and we will have to go ahead and build a tier 1 settlement for another 1,000 gold, but I think that's worth it. And did I see a Abyssa down here? Um, I do not, but Oxyoto is actually going in as well. So we might not actually have to come south. Oxyoto might do with this province. Uh, maybe we can go and fight over here and take that province for ourselves or we could just focus on the continent maybe take out the dwarfs 
and um, push back to Tomb Kings. I think that would be a better idea. If Oxyotl doesn't need our help, then we can focus on the continent we're currently on. We go over to Uaxti. Let's see, is this a Pyrrhic victory? It is, and we wouldn't lose anyone either. Uh, so I will go ahead and auto-resolve this one. 6,000 experience, very nice. Of course, we will go ahead and occupy this. And Uraxti gaining a new trait there, plus free leadership when laying siege or encircling. And we did manage to kill Ellie the Treacherous, as well as secure in the province. And there we go, the Awakened have been obliterated. There is nothing left apart from the echoing laughter of thirsting gods. So Luther is gone once and for all. We got to him before uh, Isabella could. And Uraxti also gained another level up. So how are we spending this one? I think we're just going to go for that weapon strength again. Yeah, it's looking very good there. And um, ah, he has another level up. He actually gained two level ups. Okay, I missed that. Uh, let's go ahead and get him some more weapon strength. There we go. That should pay off nicely. Uh, Tepchik also gained a level up. So let's go ahead and give him Root Marcher there. And where's Pryjo? Now, uh, Pryjo, he's almost at Kemri, so we don't need to force march now. Let's go to the Springs of Eternal Life. I think we can push a bit further, actually, and then we can attack Kemri next turn. Uh, it's quite a sizable garrison, but he should be fine. A lot of Sourish units in his army. Let's see. We can upgrade our defense in the marks of the old ones. I think I will do that, actually. 4,000 gold, but I think it's worth it. And we do have a commandment over here now. Maybe I should have upgraded this to tier 1 first. In fact, let's cancel this upgrade here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this to tier 1. And let's go ahead and put that on some extra growth. There we go. Uh, hopefully we can get the vampire corruption out of these lands. And I think we could also go and take the jungle of webs next. Maybe fight the, the Bretonians up there. Uh, we can upgrade our income, so let's go ahead and do that. We can also upgrade the growth in that uh, settlement there. And we will check our diplomacy once again. I don't think anything here. Yeah, nothing here. So let's go ahead to turn 71. Oxyotl have ended their non-aggression pact with us. Why would you do that? Why does he hate me so much? Um, he likes me because of treaties with other lizard men as well as our war, uh, but minus 15 because we are a strategic threat. Surely he would know that we're working together for the, the great plan here. Uh, I'm actually really confused why his AI would dislike us so... So Rakaf declaring war against us there. So it looks like we killed Lufa and now we do have a new enemy in Rakaf on the west coast of Lustria here. So we're going to have to go and deal with him. And the dwarves attacking our settlement there. Uh, there's no way I could win that one. Um, by fighting it manually. So we're going to have to auto resolve and concede this one here. And a rite of Soltek performed. And the Wardens of the Living Paws have been obliterated. Uh, so one of the Lizardmen factions there leaving us for good. Uh, they did not like us anyway though. And uh, where was that event that just popped up? Um, there we go. Ah, oh, this always get a little bit annoying. If you hover over this by accident you lose it. And there we go, the Wild Hunt seizes. Now at last, the Wild Hunt is over and Athel Lauren rests once again. The power of Kurnos flowed through the Wild Riders and all those who joined the hunt in the forest's name. The pace was furious, the hunt charging along hidden paths and through the usually gentle glades. Any creatures unlucky enough to be caught were showed no mercy, their death serving as a noble sacrifice to Orion's ageless grandeur. Uh, so the wild hunt there has seed and was there anything else we did lose uh the settlement there that the dwarves took and we do have a new mission uh recruit the following type of unit missile infantry our revered revered masters demand more warriors to stroke strike from afar like a scorpion's sudden sting for eight turns we would gain plus two recruitment rank for missile units and minus 25 percent recruitment cost I don't think we care about that too much right now 
Let's go back over to Krokgar. He should be able to take uh, Tor Supinda this turn. Uh, let's go ahead and put him on normal stance here. And uh, we don't actually have enough gold for this. So we're just going to put him here for this turn, I think. Um, in fact, we could send Tepchik up here. And I might just take Gorok, or Krokgar, sorry, uh, to the south here. And maybe we can take out these. I am scared of Oxyotl now and why he hates us so much. That is a little bit confusing. In fact, um, I kind of want to go here. Can I improve this? What if I join some of your walls? No, there's no walls I can join. Uh, it's really confused me uh, why he hates us so much. Uh, let's go over to Uaxi. He's currently replenishing his troops. Uh, let's go ahead and get this. Uh, the Cursed Islet. You receive word of a wooden carcass of a ship that has been discovered strewn across a small mysterious island. You are told that beyond the beach gold and other trinkets can be found in abundance. Surrounded by the long dead crewmen who starved whilst waiting to be rescued. Maybe it's Luther's ship. <laughs> Some of your own crew whisper of curses which may be worth heeding. But such things rarely deter you when looted wealth and riches are involved. Now, I don't think we should fight because our army is damaged. I think we should just wait. Only a miserable horde of treasure, but it's better than nothing. And there we go. Knowing the other more unsavory individuals may also be drawn to the cursed island. You delayed sending in your own small salvage party. When you eventually sent them a few days later, they found that the majority of the loot had already been extracted from the wreckage. But fortunately, there was a small sacks of golds left behind to make it worth the effort. So we still gained 1,000 gold. That's 1,000 more than we had before. And I am actually... Let's go into the altar of the horned rat here. Now we should get a bit more replenishment there. Uh, yeah, there we go. Lots more. And we're going to start marching west because uh, we do need to fight the dwarfs here before they take more of our settlements. If we go over to Prigel, uh, we should be able to attack Kemri this turn. So let's go ahead and try this one. Uh, Pyrrhic victory there, but we don't lose anyone. So we may as well auto-resolve this one. Ah, uh, oh, we don't have anyone with Siege Attacker. Okay, uh, maybe that was a bit of a mistake there. Oh, wrong button. Uh, we're actually going to have to build um, a battering ram here. Uh, there we go. And then we'll just continue the siege and attack that next turn. I don't think the lizards have any artillery, actually. Uh, it just occurred to me. And why has the map rotated? There's uh, still a few things that uh, annoy me a little bit when playing Warhammer 3. Uh, only small things, but they do add up. Uh, let's go ahead and check our diplomacy here. I don't think there's anything there. Yeah, so let's go ahead to turn 72. Hi, Queen Kalida wanting military access. I will say no to that one. The great incantation of Kassar have been performed by the Tomb Kings there. Uh, so that one's interesting. But if we look out here, uh, we have taken the Jungle of the Gods. Uh, shortly, we will also take back Dawn's Landing, which is nice. And I think we might actually still go south. Um, although we can't occupy this, so maybe we should leave this to Oxyotl. If we go over to Lustria, we did manage to wipe out Luther. I think next is the Dwarves. Uh, we also need to fight back Rakaf, although it looks like Rakaf has been fought back by these guys. I'm not actually quite sure where Rakaf is. Uh, I think he is usually along the coast here. So maybe he's not a threat, but we do need to fight back the dwarfs. And then I think we're going to fight back the Bretonians here. So actually overlooking our campaign so far, if you factor in the other lizards, we're doing very su uh, a successful job here. Uh, but sadly, that's all I have time for today. A bit of a shorter video. Uh, but I do need to get up early tomorrow and prepare some stuff for the weekend. There still should be a video tomorrow on Sunday, but we shall see. Probably a bonus Crusader Kings free video or something. But thank you for watching. I shall be back with another episode soon. I shall see you then.